where it is our mission to follow Jesus by loving God and loving our neighbors. I'm Thomas Smith, senior pastor here at Central, and it is a joy to have you with us today in worship. Whether you are worshiping in person here in the sanctuary with us today or worshiping with us online, thank you for making Central a part of your day today. If you're new to Central, if it's your first time with us, we are especially glad that you are here and hope you'll worship again with us real soon. And uh, in the pew rack in front of you, you'll notice some blue connect cards. If you would fill one of those out and take it to our welcome center in the commons, we have a gift for you. Uh, also, um, on the way in today, you may have noticed some things. Hopefully you have an order of worship. Everything you'll need to guide us through our time together is in these pages. Also, uh, there on, that, on the usher tables, you may have noticed some copies of Under the Dome, our monthly newsletter. If you don't already have one, I encourage you to pick one up, and there's a wealth of ways to connect with God through Central in those pages. Also, there are some Bibles. If you don't have a Bible and you'd like one or you know someone who needs a Bible, please take one. That's what they're there for. Uh, today, we uh, have a special... Uh, time of worship as we celebrate Central's Stephen ministry and as we commission a new class of Stephen ministers. You'll hear more about that as we go into our service. But our Stephen ministry is one of the most significant ways as a church that we're able to care for one another. And we celebrate that today and we celebrate the achievement of these new Stephen ministers who have undergone hours and hours and hours of training to be able to provide unique Christian care to people in need. Something else coming up in the life of our church on April 28th, Meg and Ann and I, so all the, the three clergy here on, on staff, we will be uh, offering a, a crash course in Methodism that we didn't think real hard about the name, but we're calling it Methodism 101. And if you just would like to learn more about the United Methodist Church and our heritage as a branch of the Christian family. I encourage you to take advantage of that. There'll be more details to come. Also, the series of home gatherings that um, many of you are generous enough to host and allow me to come into your home and, and, and visit and fellowship with uh, members of this church family in more intimate and uh, close ways, more less formal ways, as well as a time to have some intentional conversation. We have, Those are underway now. We have two uh, this week, one tomorrow night and one Wednesday night. And if you have not already registered for one, I know you're going to want to. Uh, and you can do that through Realm or by calling the church office. Well, friends, as we gather now for this time of worship, let us be open to Christ's presence with us as we worship God in spirit and in truth.
The bread of life opens our eyes. The word of life opens our ears. Peace be with you. I invite you to remain standing as we affirm our faith and speak of those things we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. I invite you to join me in praying our colleague and Lord's Prayer, which are printed in your order of worship. Holy God, by your Spirit, reveal your radical, surprising love. Come to us through your Holy Word and let us hear what you are saying. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, once again, it's my joy to welcome you to Central today. I would encourage you, if you would, at the end of your pew, find that friendship pad, and if you would, fill in the information there so that we might know that you were with us today. And once it gets to the end of the pew, if you would send it back the way it came, and look on the pad, and maybe you'll make a new friend today or reconnect with someone. I would remind you, though, that you're invited to be involved in all the activities of Central United Methodist Church, and any of us would love to help you find ways to connect with God here at Central. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any of our clergy if you have a, uh, questions or want to discuss next steps or anything. And of course, we want to open the door to Christian discipleship and invite you if you have questions about what it be, might be like to become a member of Central. We would love to talk with you about that as well. But once again, well. Acts 3, 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see now and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore. Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out.
This morning's epistle lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we respond with our act of praise today is from the fourth psalm, and you'll find it in selection 741 in your hymnal. If you will stand as you are able and join me. When I call, O God of my right, how long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. But do not sin. Offer right sacrifices. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. But I will invite our children to come forward to be with Miss Brandy this morning. It's so good to see everyone so clearly this morning. Well, did y'all know if I did not have in my contacts right now, which are like glasses, they help you see contacts do. Um, and I wear these glasses at night when I take out my contacts. But if I did not have those in, did you know as close as I am to you, I would not be able to see who you were? I would just see a blur. Yeah, that's how bad my eyesight is. 
So when I was little, I thought everything in the world had fuzzy edges because that's the way it looked to me. And when I was in third grade, I began to complain to my teacher that everything on the chalkboard looked fuzzy. I couldn't read it. Yes, we had chalkboards back then, <laughs> not smart boards. I am that old. So my mom took me to the eye doctor, and they said, Brandy needs glasses. And do you know right when I put on those glasses, I remember where I was standing in the eye doctor's office. It was a window overlooking um, Harbison Boulevard in Columbia, and I screamed out because I was even loud then. And I screamed out, wow, the, le the trees have leaves on them. <laughs> I didn't know because I couldn't see clearly. And that changed everything for me because I could see when I started wearing my glasses. And although you might not have trouble with your eyesight, all of us have difficulty seeing and understanding things at times. And that's what our Bible study, our Bible scripture reading is about today that Reverend Bietla is gonna read to us. And it comes from the book of Luke and it happens three days after Jesus had died on the cross and had um, rose from the dead. And a couple of his disciples had thought he was gone forever. So do you think they were happy or sad? They were very, very sad. And they could not see things clearly because they were so sad. And they were walking back to their home and another traveler joined them. And they were talking to him and they were telling them, they were telling the stranger all about Jesus and how sad they were. And they invited the stranger into their house to eat dinner. And guess what? When the stranger broke the bread and blessed it, it was like when I put on my glasses for the first time. They saw it clearly. Guess who the stranger was? It was Jesus. He had been there the whole time, and they didn't even know it until he blessed the food. He, then they realized it. So what I want y'all to remember this week, and as we go throughout our, throughout the next, well, just throughout the rest of the, our time, when we feel confused and don't see things clearly, Jesus is with us to help us and understand that God loves us and there's nothing to be scared of. So will you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, we are thankful that Jesus is walking with us every day and that he will help us see clearly and understand things that happen in our lives. Amen. See you next week. Have a good week.
Please be seated. Thank you to Dr. Bill Hazelwood for the beautiful anthem and for uh, the choir for bringing it to life this morning. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place in these past days? And he asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a mighty prophet in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them when he was at the table with them. He took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of bread. The word of the Lord. Easter is a, uh, a great victory. God has raised, crucified Jesus from the tomb. That's a great message, I was here. And yet, the message of Easter for us is even more dramatic than that. Just take today's story. It's an appearance story. Two disciples are on a seven-mile journey back home to Emmaus following the crucifixion of their Savior. He was their best chance against the Romans, but he is dead. We had hoped, they said. You can't fight City Hall. It's over. He's dead. A stranger joins them while they're walking. They talk a little Bible, learn the latest news from Jerusalem, and they stop to eat. And the stranger takes some bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it to them. And then they see Jesus and he vanishes. Now, why didn't they recognize Jesus before that? Well, I don't know. Luke doesn't say. Easter stories, you know, are not eyewitness accounts of people watching a once dead body stride forth from an empty tomb. Nobody saw that. 
Easter stories are all about appearances. The risen Christ appearing, appearing to the very people who betrayed him, who forsook him in his crucifixion. Another gospel has women going out to the tomb in the darkness, and there they encounter a young man in white who says to them, he isn't here, he's not here, he's gone. You should have been here a minute ago. You just missed him. <laughs> and why Galilee? An out of the way, backward kind of place, out from Sardis. <laughs> you might think that the risen Christ on the first day of his resurrected life would go somewhere important, like maybe up to Jerusalem, go to the palace, show yourself before an astounded and terrified Pontius Pilate and say, oh, Pontius Pilate, you made a big mistake. <laughs> it is payback time. Or maybe go to the great imperial palace in Rome and show himself to Caesar and say to Caesar, Caesar, you lost. But no. The Gospels all say the risen Christ refers, returns first to his disciples. Not to anyone important, not to anyone powerful, but to his disciples. He showed up to those who dared to follow him, who often fell asleep, who had very little idea of what he was doing. The great Easter truth is not simply he is risen, as great a truth as that is. Rather, the great truth is the risen Christ has come back for us. The sinners like us, John Wesley said it is one thing to say, God is love, but true Christian faith occurs when you can say, God is love pro me, God is love for me. And that's what we learned on Easter. God is not just Lord of life, but rather he is Lord of love, love that is moving toward us relentlessly. It would have been, I know, wonder enough if Jesus just came back from the dead. But this is the day we celebrate when Jesus came back to us. Unfaithful, frightened, not too bright disciples. Us. You should note in these disciples' grief they're not out looking for Jesus, hoping against hope that maybe he survived the cross, maybe the rumors weren't true. No, as usual, he came to them. And you can imagine why this is such a great hope for Christians. We don't come to Christ. Christ comes to us. We don't find Jesus. Jesus finds us. Their conviction was though they did not expect it nor even want it, the risen Christ sought them out. He shows up when you least expect it. Well, I was a young pastor at my first church, three little churches really, in Chiral. Several months into my time there, a, a group in that church decided that they wanted to leave the church over some belief. I, I couldn't figure it out. They were angry. I called the district superintendent and told him, I've got some problems. These people want to leave. And he says, tell them to leave. <laughs> I said, no, I don't think you understand. Uh, they're angry. I, I, they're going to turn on me. I know you need to get over here and talk to them. They want to talk to you. 
So two nights later, sure enough, the district superintendent shows up in the church basement and the district superintendent just lets them have it. He said, you've complained about this before and I am just sick of it. If you want to leave, leave. Listen, we sent you a nice new pastor. What more do you want? Do you know how hard it was for me to find a pastor for you? Nobody wants to come to this place. I had to go all the way to Ohio to find you a pastor. <laughs> Nobody wants to be here. Well, I, I, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> there was a pause and then a farmer in the community sitting in the back rose up and he said, well, Mr. DS, if what you say is true, I guess it makes it all the more amazing that Jesus himself manages to show up here every Sunday. Well, he was right. It is amazing. Easter just doesn't happen back then. Easter keeps on happening. Jesus wasn't just raised then. He's raised for us now. Jesus keeps doing in the resurrection what he did throughout his earthly life. He keeps showing up uninvited, revealing himself to people who don't deserve him, sending them on outrageous errands. And that's you. Really, that's, that's the basis of your faith. In fact, that's why I'm so bold to say, that's why you're here right now. In one way or another, Jesus showed up to you, appeared to you. And I bet you've seen this happen in your own life. I know, I've seen it. You don't really want to come to worship some Sundays. Now you're not expecting much, thinking more about the masters than God. And then, you know, you're here and something happens in the service. A snippet of a hymn, a line from a prayer, a finely sung anthem, maybe even a sermon. And, and, and something just grabs you, moves you. The risen Christ showing up and standing among you. There is something about this Christ, the same one who died just for sinners, who keeps appearing, showing up, even to the likes of us. Anne Lamott, in her new book, writes, love just won't be pinned down. Um, there's a young person in this church He's uh, ending his college career this year. He stayed in touch with me throughout his college career. He calls me, tells me his problems, asks me questions, challenges my authority. I, I like him. When he first called, I asked him, hey, uh, why are you calling me? You know, I'm retired. And he said, well, you baptized me, didn't you? And I said, yeah, uh, so, so we talk. He texted me after my shoulder surgery recently to tell me that he was taking a trip the next day and would call me from his car to talk to me, saying, you know, I don't really have anything else to do. <laughs> well, I'm honored, I said. Um, <laughs> I will warn you, I'm on pain medication, but I'm, I'm honored. <laughs> well, he set the time, sure enough, the next morning. He called right on time. I answered the phone, and he said to me without any small talk, you're just not going to believe what's happened to me. 
Well, try me, I said. About a month ago, I was reading the Bible, like you said, and I was in the library. It was real quiet, like my parents told me to do. And I don't know what happened, but I, it was quiet and nobody around, and uh, it was like, like a religious experience. Jesus, Jesus was just there. He talked to me. He told me how much he loved me. He told me I was doing fine, that I was not alone. Jesus said to me, keep up the good work. And then he was gone. It was like he just kind of jumped me from behind and left. And, and he said, am I crazy? I, I said, you aren't in the K.A. house right now, are you? <laughs> No, you're not crazy, really. That's what Jesus does. I told you a long time ago to keep looking over your shoulder, that Jesus had plans for you, that Jesus one of these days was going to get to you. He was after you. I didn't know when it was going to happen, but I was sure it would. We promised you, your parents, when you were baptized, that Jesus was going to hound you every day of your life. And you know he might do it again. Glad to hear from you, good news. Then he said, well, I gotta go, the light just turned green. Good talking to you. I looked at my phone. I'd been on that phone for 56 minutes. After 56 minutes on the phone, Lindy came out and asked me, what was that about? I said, oh, it's Jesus. He's on the loose. <laughs> he showed up again, maybe even at the K.A. house. <laughs> Where are those pills? Transitions with Tom, huh? <laughs> Took a minute. <laughs> uh, it is such a wonderful Sunday, and as part of this service today, we are going to commission our newest Stephen ministers who are ready to serve. I, as I call out all of the names, some of them will be commissioned in the well worship service right now and some of them will be commissioned here. We're all being commissioned together, one church. I would ask all Stephen ministers, past and present, as the newest ones are making the way, just to stand briefly so that the, our congregation may feel surrounded by the love that you show them continuously. So as I call the names, all Stephen ministers, past and present, stand where you are as you are able, and our new Stephen ministers make your way to the front of the chancel wheel. Susan Breeden, Elizabeth Campbell, L.V. Eady, Ron Gardner, Emily Griffin, Elena Hilly, John Jacobs, Ann McNair, Mincy Peterson and Amy Sansbury. Come and stand with us. Dear friends, today we recognize our congregation Stephen Ministry and commission these new Stephen Ministers who stand for us. We commission, commission them in this special task in the service of Jesus Christ. Each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for us all. We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and community who need to be comforted. And as Jesus has responded to your needs, we ask you to be responsive to the needs of others. 
as Jesus took the burdens of the world on his shoulders and has been a friend to you in troubled times, we ask you to be a patient listener in a hurried world. As Jesus has broken down the barriers that separated you from God, we ask you to heal divisions wherever you find them and trust in God to make people whole. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask that you use your skills and talents and prayers to help those people you serve. As Jesus has shown his care to you, we ask you to help this congregation grow into a caring community through your own caring ministry. As Jesus has revealed his presence to you through faith, we ask you to share your personal experiences of faith with those around you so that they too may celebrate the presence of Christ in our world today. And so, as disciples of Jesus Christ and as members of this congregation, we accept the role of Stephen Minister as you seek to follow Jesus by loving God and loving your name. And now we ask you, our congregation, to open your hearts to the ministry of these people and to pray for them, that they may be effective servants of Christ. If so, please respond. We will, with the help of God. Friends, in the name of this congregation, we commission you as Stephen ministers and pledge to you our prayers, encouragement, and support. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you that in this and all things you may do God's will in the service of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who today reaffirm their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give each of them courage, patience, and vision. Strengthen us all in our Christian mi mission of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, don't go away just yet. Meg has something for you. We, we, we all have something for you, a pen that you can wear to let others know that you are Stephen Ministers. And while she's doing that, I want to offer on behalf of the church a word of thanks. I'm becoming a Stephen Minister is a lot of work, and we thank you for that. Thank Reverend Tom Pietler for leading you in that work. Um, it, it's a lot of work for him and for y'all. And we are grateful. Thank you. I'd like to offer, on your behalf, our prayers to God. Merciful God, today we come before you with thanksgiving. As we are thankful for the creation around us that reminds us of your love, for your partnership of the Holy Spirit with every person, for ministry, for the spiritual gifts that you endow us with. We are thankful for the people who have chosen to nurture and care for others, for the time and the prayers, for the visits and the reminders of your love for all of us. And today we offer special thanksgiving for all of the people who have chosen to study and practice, pray, and serve as Stephen ministers. As you have blessed this new class of gifted people, we ask that you continue to bless this ministry so that we might work together to offer care for one another. Lord, today we also come before you to ask forgiveness and mercy for the violence that still racks your world from the individual acts to violence that affects generations to the lack of love that humanity has for one another lord we ask your mercy we know you have given us every gift to find solutions that honor you give us the will to use those gifts Give us minds and hearts that have the wisdom to find solutions. Lord, we pray for our country and ask that you guide us 
guide our leaders, and protect those who seek to protect others. And Lord, for those whose battles with health and grief and physical needs, with battles we may not know anything about, we pray for your healing and for your presence to guide them also in the hands of those who reach out and help to them. For all of these things, dear Lord, we pray to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we take these few moments to intentionally dedicate our lives and our gifts to God's service, and I'll invite our ushers to come forward.
Go now in peace, and may the grace and peace of the risen Lord be with you all, now and forever. Amen.